Hello, everybody. My name is Kasim Abdul Razak, the author of Five Essential Principles for Healing Black Men and Raising Black Boys. And today I'm here to talk with you about this book, and I got my special guest, my son. Um, hello, everybody. I'm uh, Isa Abdul Razak. All right. So we want to have a little bit of a discussion about this book, but before we talk about the specifics in this book, and I am going to read um, part of it, but I want to ask you because, you know, me writing this book, um, I was probably just a few years older than you when my father passed away. So there's certain conversations that we never got a chance to have. There's uh, certain experiences that we never had a chance to have. And so I want to just kind of ask you again, putting myself back in your shoes as a teenager is it important to have like a, a relationship with your father? Most definitely. Yeah. What and, and and again specifically being that you're a black boy growing up, what does it mean to have a black father in your life, and what are some expectations that you have for me as your dad? Um. Well, black fathers are just amazing role models, and they help me um, grow and develop into the man that I want to be, and. Um, you said, well, like, what role do you play in my life? Or, or what are the expectations that you what have for me? Expectations? I expect for you to, um, for you to be stable yourself to, uh, give me advice and to be able to help me. All right. Now, now this, look, I, I want us to be real, have a real conversation. Is that always a perfect relationship? Does it always happen the way that you want? Um, no. Okay. That's what I expected. Part of like writing this book, man, was really about knowing that as a father, there were some things I felt confident in, some stuff that I felt I was getting right, but there were some things I knew that I was getting them wrong. And so there's a part of this book that I want us to read together because it talks about as a parent, you really have to be able to learn from your child. And that's been one of the things for me that's been a learning curve, man, is that as my oldest son, there's some things I just did not know to do. And the only way that I learned how to do them or that I'm still learning how to do them is by you teaching me. So I want to read this part and then I want to just kind of have some conversation with you about maybe what your reactions were about um, as you listen to it. But the part I want to share is like a story of a time I did share with my dad that was one of the most memorable times of my life. It happened when I was like an eight-year-old and I went on this, this camping trip, and my dad came on the camping trip with me. So uh, this, this part that I'm reading is actually from the section of the book uh, titled Mining Our Own Business. And because that's what it means to be a black father, it means to invest and to mine the relationship with our children. So listen to this, and I want you to think about like our relationship and maybe either you know, how you've experienced this or maybe it's something that you want to experience. In third grade, eight years old, my father came on a school camping trip, Camp Courage. He ate breakfast with me in the, in the lunchroom that morning before we left on the bus. I recall feeling proud. Kids came up to my dad and asked him questions, looked in awe, and adults showed him a great respect. My father was a people's person and yet genuinely himself. Camp Courage was one of the best experiences in my life. Each day we woke and went on hikes, fished, swam, and canoed. My dad, John Rudell Withers, was a standout. He knew how to do it all. He even knew things my teachers didn't, and he was good at translating the information to kids. My dad, a country boy from the South, was a star of the trip. Every kid wanted to be in our group for everything. A highlight for us as kids was a day on the basketball court. We were out there playing when the teachers decided to get involved and show their skills. Well, John the Legend got on the court and destroyed every staff member. Shot after shot, move after move, and man, he looked good doing it. I remember him walking off the court and smiling, putting his hand on my head, pulling me in close as if to tell me, Son, see who we are, see what we can do. We are great people. 
The last night of Camp Courage, everyone met down in the big hall to tell stories and make s'mores. When I saw all the kids eating s'mores, I felt left out and began to shy away. My dad looked at me and asked what was wrong. Feeling defeated, I said, I know we can't eat the s'mores because the marshmallows have pork in them. My dad looked at me in my eyes, smiling, and said, Yeah, but we can eat them. We could eat the graham crackers and chocolate. We laughed so hard, then went right over and grabbed our treats. These fond memories and many others were the deliberate actions of my father to mind his business. My father was developing the attitudes, belief, worth, work ethic, values, and talents of his son, his business. Son, it's crazy because, like, when I'm reading that, it's literally taking me back to that day at Camp Courage. And I remember being a kid and feeling excited to, you know, just have my dad on a trip. And I also re remember feeling like not only just excited, but feeling proud, but also feeling that I was able to show up as my full self. I wasn't worried about getting in trouble with teachers. I wasn't worried about uh, being put down. And then that one moment that I did start to feel some of those emotions of like either worry or anxiousness about how who I was as a person might not be received, my dad was there to be like, no, nah, it's all good. Like, we're going to be all right. When you hear like me read this story of like my childhood, does any of that like resonate with you? as like in our relationship or things that you think of like man I remember a time feeling like that yes yeah what what kind of story or what, what kind of thing can you think of um actually a similar um a uh, similar thing happened between me and you we like remember we went on a camping trip to Lac Du Bois oh, and yeah, I was yeah. also in third grade <laughs> right yeah so yeah. what happened on the trip hmm? what happened on the trip um the same emotions, I was feeling super happy and proud. Everybody wanted to be around you, mm -hmm. and that kind of just gave me a good feeling. But I remember uh, we were actually playing basketball in the, uh, in the like, little dome. Yeah. And Marcel, he just kept beating me and beating me, and I got super upset. So I threw the ball. Yeah. And then you took me outside. We talked. You made me put my hands in my snow to, I mean, you made me put my hands in the snow to, like, cool down and cool off. And then we went back in there, and we had a good time. Yeah. No, it's funny that you bring that up, because now, exactly as you're saying it, I do remember that, that being at Lac du Bois, and that was, that was our first uh, kind of, like, father-son trip together, like, as it related to school. And uh, that was a proud moment for me to be able to be there. And it, I knew what that felt like as a son, like being in that space of like having my dad be there, talk to me, encourage me, make me feel supported. But that was my first time actually being a dad being in that spot, which was different. So I remember times on the trip where your excitement looked like things that could get you in trouble and not really knowing what to do in that time. But knowing that your expectation of me was that I was going to make you have a or help you to have a good trip, have a good camping experience, that I was there to support you, and that I was there to make sure that uh, that you you interacted in the space in a way that you know held up the values of who I expected you to be. And so, no, that was a that was a great trip for me and um, an exciting time. Was that something that was helpful in terms of like your confidence or? you know, uh, feeling confident about who you are as a black boy growing up in the school? Um, yes. It, when you came, it made me feel like I didn't have to try and put on an act or act how the teachers or how my peers wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I just got to be myself since you were there. Yeah. Man, I really appreciate that, son. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out your day to come through and just really talk specifically about that piece around minding our business. There's a ton of work that I still have to do as a father as it relates to me minding your business. One of the things that I'll share with you that we've talked about before, but I'll be you know just really uh, candid about is that 
in our family, you're one of three. So you're not you're not the same as your older sister. You're not the same as your younger brother. And one of the things that for me that is really a challenge is to figure out who you are specifically. Like what are your gifts? What are your talents? And uh, and what are your challenges? And to figure out how to identify those things, love you in those things, and support you in the way that you need to be supported. So I know you've been on this planet for for uh, you know, 13 years now, what would you say are some things that you've learned about yourself in terms of your, your gifts, your talents, who you are as a young person? Um, something that I've learned about myself is that I'm very, um, persistent Mm -hmm. and like, if I find enjoyment in something, like just say like a sport. Yeah. I will keep trying and trying and trying until I get that, like, until I feel like I'm where I want to be. Man, Issa, I appreciate you taking the time to come out here and talk about the five essential principles for healing black men, raising black boys. Um, I hope we get a chance to do this again, man, but I appreciate you. Thank you for taking this time to sit with me. Kasim Abdul Razak, the author of Five Essential Principles for Healing Black Men and Raising Black Boys. This was a book that, man, it, it, it took a lot out of me as a person. Um, it was a time in my life that really inspired me to put these words on page. And part of it was uh, the re-experience of a traumatic event. As a teenager, I had a father who passed away at a very young age. He was 38 years old. He died in our living room. And unknown to me, I was carrying a lot of that trauma, a lot of that experience around with me from my teenage years to my young adult. And it didn't get into the point of where I had my own children that I started to notice, again, some of these these effects of losing a father at a young age and then finding myself in the very similar situation, which was being a black father, having to parent young black boys. And so this writing came about <clears throat> as an inspiration of wanting to be a very strong uh, black father for my children and to know that I did not have it all figured out and to know that there was some healing that I needed to do myself. And so there was a process that I took myself through every single day to really connect to what is it that I need for myself to heal And what is it that I need to contribute into the lives of my sons to make sure that they have the best ability to grow and develop um, in this life so that they are going to be the men that I want and expect them to be? So in this book, as I was going through my own journey of what it looked like to be an African-American boy growing up and losing a father young in life, I had to start to ask myself some very hard questions. And I started to, I needed to connect to the storyline of my life. And one of the things that was beautiful as I went through this process is that there was a pain. There was a pain that went along with writing and thinking and contemplating and processing all of the things that are in this book. That pain was a pain that was necessary to move forward and establish a healing process. So in this writing, I came up or I came to the conclusion of five principles that are essential. And the thing that I love most about this book is that it's a book that's not complete. It's talking about these five essential principles for healing, which means not healed. It's not concluded. But these are some things to get uh, yourself on the journey. So this book here are for anybody who's in the life of black boys, black men, and is invested in their healing invested in their psychological, emotional development, their spiritual development, and wanting to see them live their best life. So again, this is a book that is necessary for anybody who really wants to see the growth and healthy development of black men and black boys. Some of these principles in here are related to the father-son relationship. So one of them being, being mining your business and again, mining like a like a gold miner. It means like to really take the time to nurture the relationship between father and son. 
And that means that it's a reciprocal process. As a father, there's no way to know every single thing that you need to know about being a good parent, um, which means that you really have to take the time to get to know your child. And if you have more than one child, getting to know those children individually. What are their strengths? What are their challenges? How might they need you to adapt as a parent to show up in the way that is the best fit for them to get to their end destination, which is health and wellness? One of the things that I'm really excited about as it relates to this book, The Five Essential Principles for Healing Black Men and Raising Black Boys, is that it's grounded in the culture of being a black man in the context of America. And there is a ton of history that speaks to the challenges that black people have endured um, in America. And the one thing that's been a saving grace that is connected to our ability to maintain um, our sense of humanity and also take the necessary steps to start to imagine what it feels like to heal is culture, African-American culture. A big part of writing this book is connected to the legacy of being black in America and what that culture looks like. And one of the things that you will find in this book that is 100% of a cultural uh, takeaway is storytelling. To be black means to transmit the way that you show up and the lessons learned through story. One of the hopes with this book is really to interrupt uh, a cycle, a cycle um, within the black experience, which is knowing that boys of today will eventually become fathers of tomorrow. The hope is that we really, again, start to disrupt this cycle and build our young boys from their, from their inception into their adulthood in ways that feel productive, that feel healthy, that feel aligned culturally. And the way to do that is to first start with the healing process of their fathers and then connect to what does it look like to raise young black boys in a healthy manner. As we begin this journey of healing our black men and raising our black boys in a healthy way, we are really speaking to unlocking the infinite potential, which means the ability to show up in life in all of the possible ways that black children can grow and become viable members of the society. I want to take the time to thank Dakota County Libraries and MELSA for allowing me this opportunity. I'm Kasim Abdul Razak, the author of Five Essential Principles for Healing Black Men and Raising Black Boys. Thank you for your time.